So let's see. Go ahead. Now, I mean, your honest opinion. You, have you ever walked on St. Augustine grass Never. before? Nope. Okay. So this is your first time. Now, this is St. Augustine grass that's well taken care of. It's got plenty of nitrogen in it. Because right. nitrogen drives the bus. Right. All right, go You're ahead. You're going to pay me later, right? Yes, go ahead. Oh, yeah. This isn't so bad at all. Right, see? I don't like it tickling my, tickling my ankles, though. Well, you don't, like long, you don't like long grass anyway. It's too tall. Hold on, get that. <laughs> but you see, it's not that... No, it's it it cushions you. It's like a it, nice it supports you. like a nice firm mattress, right? What's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. Okay, so now this video is primarily aimed at my Texas friends. I've been promising you guys some special content because you went through a massive freeze just a couple weeks ago. A lot of ice, a lot of snow, and you're wondering, hey, my lawn is looking pretty bad. It was green, now it's brown. You know, is it gonna come back? Is it all dead? Is it alive? You know, so I'm gonna try to give you some tips that will help number one, ease your mind, number two, give you some things you can do, and number three, let you know what to do as you move forward. Also, I'm gonna try to keep this video fairly mm, non detailed, and I will write a blog post that I'll link below that'll give you kind of some more details as well as some links to some different sources or resources that I have found that I researched because it's not like I've been through a massive freeze like you guys did with warm season grass, so I wasn't really 100% sure what would happen or what type of advice I could give you. So I did a lot of research myself, coupled with some of the information I already know about working with warm season turf to kind of come up with these tips and these ideas here. But again, I'll give you that blog post link below, which will give you a lot more detail if you want to really go deep and research this. Otherwise, you can just watch this video to get some of the basic tips and basic information that I think is relevant to you guys that went through that freeze. So the cold blast lasted for a good 10 days, February 10th to about the 20th or so in there, with the very coldest day seeming like it was February 16th where Dallas-Fort Worth Airport uh, recorded a minus two degree Fahrenheit temperature, which was the coldest temperature on record at that place in 72 years. You're so cold. Now, it wasn't just Dallas that got that. Obviously, the whole entire state of Texas, as far south as even the coasts, set records. Uh, and, you know, depending where at in Texas you were, some of you got a little worse than others. But for the most part, it was definitely below freezing in quite a bit of Texas, as well as there was snow that you guys aren't used to seeing and ice and just all kind of things. So the biggest thing that we're talking about here on this channel, though, is how did that affect our lawns? And when I say that, let me just tell you that the most damage or the most concern will be with St. Augustine grass lawns. We're gonna go into this a little bit further, but zoysia and Bermuda probably won't see as much damage, if any, as the St. Augustine grass lawns will. So while I'm talking to all of those grass types, I am primarily talking to you guys with St. Augustine grass, because it is the grass type that will suffer most from those freezing temperatures. So I guess the first thing we should talk about is how does cold actually damage your grass? And there's kind of three ways, and again, I'm talking very elementary here, okay? But there are essentially three ways or three types of damage that you might see. And the first one is what is called desiccation. Desiccation is essentially the drying out of the plant or the dehydration of the plant. There are actually anti-desiccants, which are chemicals that are sprayed on plants to keep them from drying out in the winter. One of the things you might have seen before is if you ever bought a live Christmas tree or a live um, wreath, for your door at Christmas. Sometimes they'll spray those with anti-desiccants, which helps them to stay greener longer because they don't dry out. And we also used to spray a lot of evergreens up north with anti-desiccants like boxwoods and things like that because we wanted to keep them from drying out in the winter winds. Well, your grass can also dry out because of lots of cold, harsh, whipping winter wind. And a lot of what you might be seeing in your St. Augustine grass, where you're seeing a lot of brown blades, and again, you're not seeing it in my lawn here, but where all the blades are brown and crispy, it could just be that they were just dried out. When they get dried out, they turn brown and they go dormant. Now, a lot of those may not come back. They're completely dehydrated out, and you kind of have to just wait for them to break down naturally. And that could be a lot of what you're seeing, and especially in your St. Augustine grass, is just a lot of desiccation, a lot of drying out. The good news there is it doesn't affect the heart of the plant or the crown or the nodes of the grass plant, which are really where the damage can occur. Now, one thing that can protect your lawn from desiccation or from drying out is snow cover. Snow cover actually creates an insulating layer that keeps the wind off. So if you had snow before the temperatures dropped and the cold winds came in, 
you may not have too much problem with desiccation. So the next damage that you might see is actually called intracellular freezing. It's basically liquids inside the cell membrane freezing rapidly and it causes the cell to die. And then on the flip side, when it starts to thaw out, if it thaws out too quickly, just think of like contraction and expansion when liquids freeze, when water freezes and thaws, it can literally burst the cell. So if those things happen and they happen in the nodes or in the crowns or basically the heart of the plant, of the grass plant, that can cause long-term damage or actual death. Once again though, having an insulating layer of snow or even ice to a degree can help with some of that. It can help these things to slow down as they freeze or slow down as they thaw, which may mean that some of the damage you see is only temporary. Now the third situation or whatever, or cold damage that you might see is actually where the tolerance of the plant is just exceeded. In other words, it just gets too cold, the plant is not hardy, and it just gets too cold for your grass plant. So, you know, kind of like humans dying up on top of Mount Everest, you, you know, they, it just gets too cold, you're just gonna die. And that can, that can happen to, terrible analogy I know, but that can happen to grass plants too, where it doesn't really matter what kind of coverage there is, what kind of snow insulation there is, you know, any, any of this stuff, it doesn't matter. It just gets too cold for the plant to tolerate and it just dies. And when I talk about that cold tolerance, I'm really talking now about soil temperatures because soil temperatures dropping are really where you're going to see the damage or loss in the turf happen. It's not about outside air temperatures. So the good news there is, is though even though outside air temperatures may be one thing, the soil is usually going to be warmer, especially if it's not cold for an extended period. Now it seems like an extended period for you guys, it was a cold for you know a week or so, but when it comes to the soil, it may take a little bit longer for the soil to actually catch up to that. So that's where we can kind of look at some general knowledge or some general idea of what the cold tolerance is of certain grass types. And again, we're talking about soil cold temperatures. So zoysia, like you see here, is actually the most cold tolerant of all the warm season turfs. And you will start seeing major loss when soil temperatures get between 15 and 17 degrees. This is why you'll see zoysia growing up north. This is why they used to sell it in the back of the parade magazine as miracle grass all up throughout Chicago. Because it has this thick, dense nature, but it can also handle the winters, they looked at it as a miracle grass. The only problem with it up there is, is it doesn't turn green, green until the end of May or early June but it is the most cold tolerant and that's why you'll find this growing quite a bit up north. The second most cold tolerant of the warm season turfs is Bermuda, which I've always told people, I don't care what you try to do, you ain't killing Bermuda anyway, but Bermuda can handle 18, 19, 20 degree soil temps before you start seeing significant loss. St. Augustine is the least cold tolerant and uh, this here is Palmetto St. Augustine grass. And so you'll start seeing significant loss here when soil temperatures hit around 25 or 26. Back there, that's Floratam. You will see significant loss in Floratam when soil temperatures hit around 28 or 29. And then I had one more, which is Raleigh, which I think Raleigh is planted quite a bit through Texas. That's actually the most cold tolerant. You'll see significant loss when soil temperatures there reach 23 or 24. When I scroll through the Greencast tool and I look at Dallas, Texas, it looks like the soil temperatures on the 17th of February, which was the peak of the cold, hit 27 degrees. So you're kind of right there. You know, zoysia, Bermuda, you're probably okay. You probably won't see very much loss. Maybe on the north facing slopes, you'll see a little bit more because they get at least sun, the least amount of sun. But for the most part, you guys should be okay. However, St. Augustine grass, you're right there in Dallas. You know, maybe if you're a little further north, it got a little bit colder, you might see some even worse loss a little bit south you might be okay. All throughout the video here, I've been showing you pictures of people from our group there that uh, live all throughout Texas. You can kind of see what their lawns are looking like right now. So let me give you some tips at this point. If your lawn is looking like this, some things you can do. So really the first tip is don't fret about it. Don't, don't complain about it. There's nothing you can do. One thing you'll learn in lawn care is that the weather always wins. Okay. So it's just one of those things you have to get through. You can't change it. So if things are looking bad, just you gotta move forward. You gotta look forward to what you can do to make the best of the situation. So that's the first piece of advice is don't fret about it, don't get angry about it. It is what it is. Move forward and be positive about it. The second thing I would do is I would get out and give it a good cut. 
just see how much green is beneath there that you might be able to expose. A lot of that stuff on top could just be death from desiccation, which again is just something that happens to the grass blades, and you may be able to get things woken up a little bit. And what I would do is I would cut it one or two notches lower. Now don't scalp down in the meat of her, especially with St. Augustine grass. All those stolons are on the top, and that's why it really has the least cold hardy ability or, or ability to withstand the coldest because all of its meat is up on top, whereas zoysia and Bermuda, they got those rhizomes underground that are protected it a little bit more but either way no matter what your grass type is cut it one or two notches lower and go ahead and start mowing some of that stuff off of there collect those clippings get them out of there that'll also allow the sun to start penetrating deeper and waking things up it'll wake up the microbes in the soil which are also going to be very good to help the grass begin to repair itself personally if I had zoysia or Bermuda I would cut it even lower but I don't necessarily know if I would scalp I would wait until I'm for sure that it's really starting to grow to, to decide if you're gonna scalp. I don't know, it's one of those things, you know, because it, it may not have the energy that it needs to really regrow everything. So I don't necessarily think I would scalp those, but for sure I would not scalp St. Augustine. I don't recommend that anyway. But cut just a couple, two or three notches lower and see what you can expose again out of there. Cutting is really the number one most important thing you can do out of all the tips that I'm gonna give you. The second thing I recommend you do is this is a time when I would say starter fert fixes everything. Now, starter fert is not gonna cure dead grass grass. You're really not going to know what died and what didn't die for another probably four, five, or six weeks because your grass is still just waking up right now. Um, so you're just not going to know. The days aren't long enough right now for your grass to really be running too hard anyway. And because it was zapped, it's going to be slow. The grass is going to be like, whoa, we're chilling right now. We got to recover from this. We need some time. It's not like the grass is going to go, Bip, it's warm again, and start taking off. It's not going to happen like that. So this is where starter first is going to help because you're going to get nitrogen and by the way the starter fur we sell is a triple 12 it's not that much nitrogen it's just a small amount so it's not going to push the grass too hard but it also has some phosphorus to help push roots and it also has sulfate of potash the more premium potash the lower salt index potash and we know potassium is really good for lawns under stress and in stress recovery. So I would hit it with the starter for it, the triple 12 now. Throw her down, let's hope for the best. Uh, at, the, at the labeled rate of three pounds per thousand and I would wait two weeks and hit it again. Throw her down boys, let's hope for the best. That's what I would do, starter for it fixes everything. But I want you to understand that's just a saying I use. And when I say that it's like, things are bad right now, let's just hit it with everything and hope for the best. But it will not bring dead grass back to life. The other thing is potassium is really probably the most important thing in there. And so if you wanted, we have just straight sulfate of potash. I'll also link that below if you want that. Potassium is great for stress recovery. It's gonna help retain moisture. It's gonna help that grass to recover. And again, the other elements are gonna help it to grow and get roots. Lastly, I would hit the lawn with sea kelp. If you have RGS, that's great. Three ounces per thousand now, and I would do that every two weeks. If you have CK, that's the higher concentrated amount of sea kelp. I would hit that now with one half ounce per thousand and do that monthly all the way through. That's gonna get the microbes going. We can never discount the microbes in the soil. We can never discount the soil life that is there and how important that is to helping the lawn to recover. That interface that it has with your root system and getting the lawn healthy is that soil. And so by getting that sea kelp in there, you're gonna be feeding that soil, feeding those microbes, kicking them up, getting them going because they're also stressed from the cold. And then lastly, start taking pictures of your lawn upload them in our app because you're gonna wanna document this because what's gonna happen is you might come back in six weeks and things don't look that great, but they look way better than they did and you won't have any record of it because if you don't take pictures of things, you kind of forget, you know, it's, it's I'm not sure how to say that, but you, you, you kind of only see what's in front of you now and if you're seeing the lawn every day, you could actually not really realize how far it has come. So I always recommend you document with pictures because looking back, you might actually go, wow, it actually has recovered a lot. Here's some video from my friend David, Mr. Lush Lawn. Now he's way down south in the Rio Grande Valley, far south Texas. His St. Augustine lawn has recovered nicely. If you go look at a video on his channel from late February, you'll see that he takes his mower down three notches, not just two, and he calls it scalping. But either way, he is cutting lower and exposing green. And look at how his lawn looks just a couple weeks later. Make sure you go subscribe to Mr. Lush Lawn. I'll link his channel in the description below. The other thing that pictures will do in documenting pictures and putting them in the lawn journal on the app, I'll put that below, the Yard Mastery app, it's free. The nice thing about that is then you could watch for areas that are not gonna recover, that probably did die, and those are the areas where you might have to sod or put in some plugs. And I wanna just say to all of you, you're probably gonna have to do that, especially the further north in Texas you are. If you have St. Augustine grass, you probably are gonna have some loss. And if you do, 
it's okay. You just sod. We do surgery here. We don't do seed. You just cut the areas out like a skin graft. You drop in new skin or new sod, or you can use plugs. You know, that's all we do here. It's that simple. It's that easy. And they take really quick and everything blends. So just be ready for that. You're probably going to have to do some surgery. Um, no matter how good all of these things do, no matter how much fertilizer you put down, all these other things, you're probably going to have some areas that die out. But if you don't take pictures, you won't really know what's recovering and what's not. So I hope these tips have been helpful to you. I know they're not earth shattering and I know that some of you were hoping for some sort of miracle cure, but again, there isn't always a cure for these freak weather events. We just kind of have to work on things as we go, document as we go. And as always, as I say, hope for the best. With that, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks so much for watching. Hope this has been helpful to you. Check out the blog post below too for more information where I'll give you like a lot of links to some really good articles that I read as well as a Texas A&M um, podcast that I watched that uh, also gave me a lot of information and I'll see you in the lawn.